we need to bother about something called as user exits. I'll tell you why we need to bother about user exits. Okay, first I'll start off with what is this user exit. A user exit is a custom, is an SAP defined window in the code where you can insert your own piece of code. Okay, so think of it like this. <clears throat> so let's say we were here and let's say we are doing this credit check, alright? So SAP is doing this credit check. SAP has some standard program that inside this main program that does the credit check part. Okay? So after it is done with the standard program that does the credit check, okay, there is a little space over here, okay, which will initially be empty. There will be no code here. Okay, there will be no code here. But that's a space provided for us by SAP so that we can write our custom code. Okay. Now, if you have seen the availability check video, the config part of it, I have discussed a use case where availability check needs to be re-triggered after credit management is done. Right? Yep. And I have discussed the business case behind it. And that's not something that happens. Um, sorry, availability check should not be triggered after credit check is done. And that's not something that happens normally. The normal default behavior of SAP is availability check is automatically triggered after a, an order is released from credit, let's say. An order is on credit hold, and an order is released from credit, so availability check automatically happens again. But I have discussed the use case or a business case where availability check explicitly should not happen after a credit document is released from credit hold. So this is an example of customization that you can only achieve via a user exit. So there is a user exit that I've discussed in that video, something that triggers after credit check, where you can write some custom coding and say, okay, do not do credit check. Okay, now don't worry about the exact code that needs to be written, um, which flag needs to be checked on, which flag needs to be checked off. That's something you can explore at a later point. But as of now, try to understand the overall concept. First concept being the code flow, and the second concept being the user exit. Now, a user exit is a, a window in the code where you can write your own custom program or custom lines of code that will affect the way the standard program works. <coughs> okay. Now, this is SAP's way of extending the product itself. Now, the requirement that I talked about with respect to availability check is very unique to a particular customer that I have worked with. Not every company wants it that way. But SAP is one product that is delivered to every company in a similar fashion. It's one product. And each company will customize it to their own needs. Like the way you go to VOV7 and customize item categories, document types. It's very specific to that company only. Let's say Johnson & Johnson. So the customization or configuration that you do with that product is specific to the needs of that company. Now, not all needs can be met with configuration. 
only some of the needs can be met with configuration. So what about the rest of the needs? Like the example that I've talked about. The rest of the needs can only be met with customization. Now what is the difference between configuration and customization? It's a very loosely used, those terms are used very loosely and interchangeably. But ideally, configuration is anything that you do in SBR. Any other customization that you do outside of SPRO, say writing a piece of code, is called customization. It could be your own custom program or it could be program programs written in user exits. Or it could be a new routine that you have created, like a new copy control routine, new data transfer routine. All of these are called customization. Okay. In short, you can think of customization as writing code. Configuration as something you do in SPR. It's only through a combination of configuration and customization that you can achieve 100% of what the customer or the company needs. Okay. I would say, in general, configuration can only achieve 20 to 30 percent of what the company needs from SAP. The rest of the 70 percent is achieved generally via customization. Okay? <coughs> so you should also be aware of customization apart from the regular configuration. SPRO is all right. You need to know it. But you also need to know customization. Where to write code, what code to write, and all that. But luckily, we as functional consultants would not have to write code. We will not even be given the authorization to write code. So you don't have to be code savvy, but you might have to understand a little bit of the code here and there. Okay? Just a little bit. So don't worry if you are not a coder in the past. There is nothing to worry about. 90% of the SD or SAP functional consultants in the SAP world who are successfully doing the jobs cannot read code. Okay? And that's good news for most of you, I believe. Because you don't have to go through code and all that. But it's nice if you have some level of comfort with code. Because some job descriptions ask for you to have some level of comfort with debugging and user exits. Okay? And if you can say that you you can debug, you can understand user exits, it's going to be a very huge advantage. <coughs> okay? I wouldn't say huge at least. Um, a reasonable amount of advantage and it gives you an edge. Okay? And it's not all that difficult also. Like I said, you don't have to be a coder. You just have to understand a little bit of code here and there. And that should be more than enough. Now, coming back to the topic of user exits. So, user exit is a window in the main program where you can write your own custom code. Okay? Now, how is a user exit? Uh, I'll show you some examples of user exits, okay, and how to go view them, so on and so forth. So here is an example <coughs> of a user exit. User exit, see it starts with a form. Form, user exit, underscore move, underscore field, underscore two, underscore vbap. And then there is some code that goes in here, and then end form. Everything that goes inside the form and end for form is the code. Okay? This is where the user exit starts and this is where it ends and anything inside it is the code. In this case, there is no code because this line of code called VBAP dash blah 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 is commented out with this star. Star at the beginning of the line means this is a comment. So it will not be done. Just like we're in C, we have this 
right? And then you write your code and then this. So that particular line is not run because it's a comment. In above, there are two ways to comment code. One way is to start with a star at the beginning of the line. Then that line is a comment. Okay. So in general, user exits start with a form and then there will be a name for it. In this case, it's user exit move field to VBAP. And then you can write anything you want inside it until end in the form. Okay. And SAP will give a generic description of what this user exit is and how it can be used. In this case, it says this user exit can be used to move some fields into the sales document item work area VBAP. Now, in this case, we don't understand what this means. VBAP, some fields, blah, blah, blah. But when you get to that point, you'll understand it. The requirements, the around pricing, how to customize the condition table, blah and all that, you'll understand it. But this is how a user exit is in the system. Okay, this is how you can view it. And a user exit is structured like this. Form, user exit name, and then there is a window. This is the window I was talking about when I said window, right? So this is the, the window. So between these two lines, you can write whatever you want anything you want. As long as it doesn't crash the system, of course, right? <laughs> you can write anything you want. And what you write will change the functionality. Then I'll give you some more examples. Now, let me take you to uh, the program, the user exit, and I'll show you how to open the program and how to view these user exits. Okay, so let's open VA01, which is our sales product program, and then go to OR, 1000, enter, and I said you can view the program that's currently being run by going to the bottom right corner and clicking on this little uh, notepad pop-up. Click on that and it will say, what's the program that's currently being run? See, at the end of the day, everything is a program at SAP, right? Everything is a program behind the scenes. And the program is generating all this logic for you, these screens, and all that funky stuff. So what is this program that is displaying the sales order screen? The name of the program is SAP MV45A. This is one way to know the program. Is there another way? Yes. Go to system. Go to system in the menu. Go to status. And you can see the program here. So. OK. So I'm copying that program, SAP MB45A, closing this. And how to open and view this program? Now, when you uh, go to the sales order VA01, you are ex asking the system to execute the program. So the program is being executed. But if you want to view the code behind that screen, how do you do it? You have to go to an editor. Right? How do you go to an editor? Yes. E38. That's the other up editor. Click OK. Enter the name of the program that we copied. And then we are going to display the source code. Okay? Like so.
Any questions apart from this point? Anybody? While this opens the pro program, does anybody have questions on the program flow or user exit or any of the concepts that we have discussed until now? All right. So this is the program. Okay, this is the program. And the code inside the program is how much? 368 lines. So is the sales sort of program just 368 lines? No. The actual program is very big because it's structured like this. There will be a bunch of includes and each include is a program again. So if you look at MV45AFZAA, that's a program again. Okay, how do you view it? Just double click on that. You, you locate a program, double click, and it will open MV45AFZAA, the program that you have double clicked on. So it's program, included in a program, included in a program, which is basically how programs are structured anyway. Okay, and here is an example of a user exit that I was talking about. See, it's very similar to what we have seen in that PowerPoint, right? So there will be a description of it as to what this user exit does. And it will start with a form and then the user exit name. And then this window of code here and then end the form. Okay, so this is how the user exit is structured. Now let me discuss one user exit. <coughs> Maybe MV45 AFZZ. Where is ZZ? This one. ZZ. Okay. I'm going to discuss MV45 AFZZ. Double click. Okay. And look at this for example. User exit delete document. This user exit, I'm, I'm reading out the description. This user exit can be used to delete data in additional tables when a sales document is deleted. Okay, now I'll tell you a scenario where you can use this uh, user exit. Okay, let's consider a scenario where when you create an order using VA01. Okay, the program is created, the order is created as usual, but we have created another Z table called Z order underscore log or something, something like that where you log when the order is created and some data like that, some data that is very specific to that customer, okay? Some data that is very specific to that customer, okay? Now, when you do that, I don't know why it's going down, I'll leave it low. When you do that, you do it as part of save. As soon as this order is saved, you go right to this table. Okay, now when you go to the sales order to delete that sales order in VA02 let's say, go to VA02 and then go to sales document delete, automatically that should implicitly also tell, the logic would imply that you go and delete the entry here. Let's say this is the requirement. How would you solve it? So as soon as it is deleted, automatically the entry corresponding to that order number in this table, the order underscore log, should be deleted. That is the requirement. How do you solve it? So you go to that user exit, underscore delete, underscore program, user exit in the mv 45 that we have seen, and then you write your code. This code 
we don't have to write, right? We just have to give a guideline as to what to write. So this code will go and locate the order number in Z order log and then delete that line, save it and then exit. This is one scenario where you can use that user exit underscore delete underscore document or program. User exit, delete, document. Now, um, field modifications is a little advanced, so let's not go there. I'm looking at some user exits that I can explain with the knowledge that you have already. Uh, okay, number range. This is a good example. Form user exit number ranges. Okay. Um, <coughs> I'll tell you a similar example um, that you can relate to because. I am saying similar because it's not used in sales orders generally, but it's used mostly in invoicing. Okay? Now, in some countries, okay, in some countries, there are requirements where, legal requirements, okay, legal requirements where all, all the invoices need to have consecutive numbers. That means if it starts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. There cannot be 4 and then a blank and then 6. Now you might be wondering why there is this problem at all in the first place. I'll tell you why. Let's say there is US 01 company code, Canada 01 company code. Okay. When you define F2 or ZF2 as the document, billing document type, you define a number range to it, right? Number range, let's say, is 01. And 01 corresponds to 1 through 999999. Now, ZF2 that you define is not specific to a country. You don't define one program for every, one document for every country. Then if you happily present in 100 countries, then you have to have 100 document types just for invoice, which is crazy, right? You will define only one program, and that one one document type, and that one document type will be used for all the sales force, all the company goods. If you want a very specific document type for India, let's say, yeah, you can define it, but you won't go ahead and define one document type for every country or every company code or every sales force. It doesn't work that way. Now, in this case, when the invoice program runs, invoice batch program, VF04 runs, it will start creating ZF2s for all the countries, US01, Canada01, uh, Italy, Germany, so on. And when it starts doing it, it will use this number range, right? It will start using, okay, one, two, three, or oh, the next program is Canada, next invoice is Canada, four, Next invoice is Italy. Next invoice is Italy. Uh, next is Germany. Seven, eight, nine, and the next is US. Then the next is US again. Eleven, twelve. Next is CA. Canada. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay. Now it doesn't really matter ideally. Yeah, sure, US has these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12, okay. But let's say Canada has this legal requirement where all the invoices need to only have consecutive numbers, like, yeah, if it starts with 4, it should be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, until the end of the world. This is not possible, right? You stand there and say, this is not possible. How do you solve this problem? Very simple. Go to that number range. The number range. Okay. And this number range between this line and this line, you write some piece of code here where if sales or org is Canada, then use US underscore range underscore 
in term equal to whatever 0 1 or let's say specific number like 0 5 so for all Canadian sales calls the number range that's going to be used is 0 5 so that every time a Canadian invoice is created it's always going to use that number range so that for all the Canadian invoices the, the number ranges are going to be pretty consistent everybody understands this um, thing any questions here I'm just, just trying to be sure I had a uh, question. Use some example so that you, you can visualize how the user exists. Hello? Hey, uh, Shima, I had a... Yes, Mutaza, go ahead. Um, our, uh, for every form, like the MV45 AF uh, ZZ, for every program, are those, uh, uh, are those exits, uh, user exits predefined? I mean, like every form will have like... Yes, they are predefined. They are predefined and you cannot create your own user exit. Whatever user exit is there can only be used. That's it. So you cannot create a new one, right, if you wanted to? No. Yeah, okay. Okay. So that's the user exit. Don't worry if you don't understand it fully really well. Um, this is just the beginning, okay? You have to do some more research on it. And uh, just remember the names of some of these programs, okay? I'll tell you some important user exits. MV45 AFCA, MV45 AFCB, ZC, and ZZ. These are some of the main programs that are used almost in every installation. MV45 AFCA, AFCB, AFCC, and AFCZ in the sales order program. In invoice, there will be a different set of programs. Okay, but that's too far at this point. At least for sales orders, if somebody asks you, what are some of the user exits that you have worked on? Just take these names, number one. Okay? And number two, um, if, you, if somebody asks you what is the exact user exit that you have worked on, so if you go to MV45 AFCZ, you can use some examples of user exit daily document or user exit uh, number range. Right? You can give these examples. At least that will take you one bit further. And you can use some of the examples that I have given delete document, number ranges, so on and so forth. Okay? So, that's how you open a program, that's how you, um, you read this code, and that's where you can write your own additional code. And like I said, your above programmer will be able to write that program for you. Once you give him the specification as to what needs to be written, the logic needs to be given by you, the actual programming will be done by the above consultant. And we have also learned some of the important user exit programs, MV45 AFDA, ZB, ZC, ZZ. And we have seen a couple of examples real-time examples of user exits. User exit delete document, user exit number range. Okay, and what are the situations in which you can use them. So that is the program flow and user exits. Now the next topic is breakpoint. Now we are moving into what is called as a debugging. What is debugging? When do we need to use debugging? <coughs> what is a bug? A bug is a problem. Right? A bug is a problem. A bug is a problem in a code. That's called a bug. What is debug? Debug is to remove a bug or find out where the bug is. But debugging is the process of removing the bug in the program. And in order to remove the bug, you have to find out where exactly the bug is. Right? 
and how do you find out where the problem is in the program. In order to do that, you have to go through certain lines of code step by step. Okay? Now, before I go there, one of the aids that you can use in going through the lines of code is called as a break point. What is a break point? Now, let me show you what a break point is, okay? So I'm going to the same program, click on display, and go to MV45 AFDV, double click on it, okay? And then, uh, let's say, use the exit number range, okay? I place my cursor there, and then, click on this stop. Okay? And then that line turns yellow. What it means is that we have set a breakpoint there and asked the program to stop when the execution comes to that point. Interesting, isn't it? Now, let's open another window. Try to create a program. V is for one. Or enter one thousand. Enter and let's just save this program. Ooh, something funky is happening. What's happening here? As soon as you save that same folder, a number needs to be generated for the same folder, right? Before that number is generated, it hits the code, the execution of the code flow hits that point where that user exit number range blah 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 is there in that program. Then over there, they have asked SAP to set a breakpoint and say break and stop here for a bit. It's like program is going from Detroit to New York and we said, okay, stop in Ohio somewhere in Cleveland. And it's, it's stopped at Cleveland right now and it's awaiting your instructions. Now at this point, you can do a bunch of things. What can you do? You can examine certain variables, like for example, US underscore, you know, range underscore and turn, okay? You place that here. Okay, what is this? This is the actual number range that is used. What is the value of it? 0, 1. So if you remember, OR uses a number range 0, 1. You know it, right? So what is 0, 1 number range? Go to VM 0, 1. I'm opening another window. Go to intervals. What is 0, 1? 0, 1 is? It starts with 1, 2, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. The current number is this. Now, on the fly, I, I want to change it to 0, 3. Can I do that? Yes. This is called debug replace. On the fly, programmatically, using debugging, we are changing the variable and seeing the effect of it. Okay, from 0, 1, I want it to change to 0, 3. 0, 3 starts from 100,000 until 1, 4, blah, 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 and the current number range is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3. Okay? Now let's go back to our screen and say, this is not 0, 1, but I want it to be 0, 3. So click on this pencil, change to 0, 3, okay? And then hit enter. Okay? Alright? Any questions up until this point? I have changed number range using what is called as debug replace. In the debugging mode, we are replacing the values of certain variables. Okay? This is just to see how it works. Okay? Now, and then we want the program to continue as usual. How do we let the program continue? We let the program continue by clicking on continue or F8. F8. Let's click on continue. And the program is going 
forward with the saving and etc. The rest of the code is being run currently. And then finally, it will have to give you that order number. Okay. Now, I have changed the number range to be used. So ideally, it should, it should give me a different order number. Unless there is some other area in the code that is overriding it with the standard uh, number range. So let's see the effect of it. Okay, move on. So it does that, now you understand the concept here. What is a breakpoint and what is debug replace? Okay, if you put a breakpoint, if you select a line of code and put a breakpoint by clicking on the stop button, it glows up in yellow. And the next time you run that program, like create a sales order, which is the execution of that program, the program stops there. And then you can do analysis at that point. What analysis can you do? You can watch the value of certain variables. You can find out what is the variable value at this point in time. Or you can do debug replace, which is changing the variable's value at runtime. So the, the screen that you see here is an older version, it's like 6. Uh, the older version of the GUI. The newer version of the GUI has a screen something similar to how we have been doing. Okay? Uh, the older version of the GUI has it. Has it like this. It's more simpler. But at the end of the day it's the same thing. We are changing the value of certain variables from the current time and finding the effect of it. Okay? And we'll see the effect of it once this program completes. But why is it taking so long? I don't know. Come on. Uh, Shiva, I had one more question. Yeah. While this is, uh, for SPRO, is there any, uh, not a debug, but kind of like when I run a phase order or do a VA01, does it know what customizations it's running? Or it's kind of like a trace kind of a thing that, okay, I went here and I did this and I went here and I did that. No. You know, no, 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 no. I think where you're going with this question, I understand where you're going, I think, but, but there's nothing like that. Okay. So you run a program, yeah, these are the customizations that I've been on the program. So you have to understand it as a consultant okay. with your knowledge of the system, that's it. Okay. I don't know what's happening there, but I, I, I can tell you the end result. The end result is going to be that instead of the order number 133 by that normally an OR takes, it will start with 1003 because we have replaced 01 with 03 at one time. That's called debug replace. Okay. Now, <coughs> what do you do from here? Where do you go from here? I want you to find out some most important user exits. Okay. Specifically surrounding that program, MV45 AFZ A, MV45 AFZ B, MV45 AFZ Z. Okay. These three programs, four programs, have almost you know, 30, 40 different user exits. At least find out business scenarios for five or six different user exits, minimum. So I've given you two scenarios, user exit delegate, user exit number range. So go ahead find out some more user exits on the business scenarios um, and keep them in your mind when you go to interview. Okay? Very important. Any questions at this point? I'm going to stop the debugging class. I think that should be good enough for one day. Um, I'm not sure if you have any questions at this point, but I'll send you this recording, go through it, and then tomorrow if you have questions, we can discuss them tomorrow also. Shiva, this is Sony here. Yes, Sony. 
Uh, is that such a relevant topic for an HD consultant? Although it is not uh, going to be any kind of uh, like a, uh, 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 program or executional level or nothing. Nothing I can find anything significant as uh, being an HD consultant. Whereas in a rough consultant, of course, they have a lot of things to do in it. But we, do we have something to do in it? No, like I said, we will not be even given authorization to write code. But we have to understand user exit, debugging, debug replace, and all these and user exits. And sorry, I mentioned user exits, I mentioned debugging. At least these two things you have to understand. Okay. So debugging we came to know something about debugging. Debugging means so we find a kind of miss error somewhere and solve it. In this scenario we just want to know where the Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, in this scenario, we want to know where the uh, error happened. That is the debugging going to help as a, to an SD consultant. Is, it, is, that, is that right? Oh, I think you are right. Okay. Uh, the next thing is I wanted to talk about the user exit and debugging also. Another aspect of debugging other than breakpoint is VA01, if you go there, enter the name of the program and then keep doing it. If you want, um, to to start debugging right away without having to go to um, the actual program and do, setting the breakpoint, you can do what is called as slash h here, okay, slash h. And then you can start going about doing your own things. By placing slash h, what you're essentially telling is, okay, for the next step, start debugging. You should eat. You can. You are. Go. Go inside. Get the code. This is the internal. Shiva, sorry, we could not hear you, Shiva. Okay. KP runs and some uh, names, yes, uh, names and you, okay. um, you have to be hearing me. So, uh, we will not hear you at that point of time. Okay, so what I was trying to say is slash h is used to start the, pro the, the execution in debug mode. Okay, just remember that. How do you do debugging? Slash h or set a breakpoint at a particular point in the program. These are the two options for you to start debugging. Okay, so don't go beyond that. It's not relevant at this point. 